first episode of the prom squad god these numbers are getting crazy to say now but this month's prom was one hue blue suggested by our own nadia and it was a lot of fun to revisit the idea of this prom with a new color tone we've had red in the past and other colors so blue is in a lot of ways kind of the complete opposite of them we've gone from hot to cold and i think very intriguing just to see the changes of subject matter and the different mediums that everyone came and chose and just thought of by this just changed one word it's it's really interesting to see how the artists of prompt squad have taken it but before I can delve into that, I'm going to start as always with my piece for the prompt and what I ended up coming up with. Honestly, I kind of wish that I'd had a bit longer time to spend on this one because I wanted to do an animation, but I didn't really have the time to really play with the frames and, you know, add enough layers to smooth it out before this deadline. So I know it's pretty choppy, but the idea is there. And I guess, you know, it's something that I can always try and revisit one day in the future and, you know, sort out properly you know maybe <laughs> how many times have I said that so yeah as I kind of touched on just then when I heard the prompt I was immediately tempted to either go water or night as the key themes because those are the two like main subjects that I think of when I think about the color blue and as I was thinking about those two themes I came up with this concept behind the paint that I ended up creating which is of a silhouette of a girl and her cat looking out of a window of a high-rise to see this like you know spirit water creature swimming past in the sky i wasn't really sure what animal i was going to do either to you know play it funny and have it just be like a tiny little fish and you know to be honest if i had more time that is probably the direction i would have gone because i think it would have been a lot of fun to have the cat you know animated more and reacting to that but as I realised the deadline was kind of looming and how much time I actually had to do this, I decided to end up simplifying it and play more with the idea of a spirit that's much larger, aka this like whale-like creature that I ended up sketching instead. I really love cinemagraphs and to be honest the reason that I keep trying to do animation and learn it as slowly as humanly possible than it seems to be at the moment is that I would really like to create more of this style of painting. I think there's something so cool about a slow moving painting like it's kind of a snapshot of a certain time but then you get this otherworldly atmosphere to it that you just don't get from a still image. It's definitely a technique that I want to keep improving on and working on in my art. And this piece was kind of a nice stepping stone to that. Though I always say that I'm happy with everything in the painting, I do like the bones of it. And I think that limited colour palette of this prompt meant that I was able to focus a lot less on the colours specifically like I usually do and look more at movement and shaping, which I think I could always do with developing in my work. So yeah, I think overall this was a really fun idea for a prompt and just in general a good thinking challenge as an artist. I think having limits like this I think can end up being really inspiring and won't you believe it, I think that is the perfect segue into exploring some of the wonderful art that the rest of our prompt squad made this month. Annie created such a beautiful illustration for this mum's prompt. It makes me realise, to be honest, that I really don't think about how to use text or fonts in my own illustrations, just very much at all, and I want to really start doing that now after seeing how Annie has used it to such an advantage and to really, you know, build up the game of this piece. 
The way that she stylized that text so that it adds to the overall piece, the overall like illustration, and that layering that she's done with the paint and the coloured pencil for the shading, just to add that extra level of texture too. Yeah, I just think it's a really strong and powerful image. Kelly is a new member of the Prompt Squad, and what an amazing piece to introduce yourself with. I mean, come on, I am in love with this Cheshire Cat inspired illustration. Just any time I see something Alice in Wonderland, I'm just ecstatic. But yeah, I love the mixture of mediums to give this layered composition. The pastel paints, swirling trees are so soft in the background, and then Kelly's played with like line art and ink and gouache, you know, much stronger mediums in the foreground to bring that cat out, whilst also you know, keeping that, like, retaining that blend so that it kind of forms into the background as well. Much like the character, I think it's just a really clever way of incorporating that aspect of the character while still making it differentiated. Twyrobe designed her own embroidery pattern for the month all around the concept of blue. She turned it into her own acronym for Because Love Understands Everything. The stitching on the lettering, I think, especially is so stunning. Her embroidery is always really clean, and I just wish you guys could see it, you know, and just having that chance to see it in person. It really is so intricate and really impressive. I think, yeah, maybe my favourite part is the Cupid's arrow. I do like the kanji for love, though, too. I think all the little details come together perfectly in this one. And, yeah, it's just crazy that it can be done in the month deadline. I'm really impressed. Louise created this adorable blue dragon for the prompt this month, and oh my god, he's just too cute! I really like the shaping of this character. It's very well thought out, like how the head is kind of rounded out, almost like a heart shape, but the teeth and the wings have more sharp angled shapes, like triangles and squares. It kind of reminds me of, you know, that Pixar design theory, where you work from basic shapes and then it builds all up to a really strong character design? I think you can see that Louise has thought about her shaping in a very similar way. She's just such a cool way of like, you know, designing characters and really interesting to see that thought process. Nadia illustrated an airplane in a sea of clouds for her piece this month, and though I know she wasn't the biggest fan of the clouds, I personally think the gentle tones and shading really give her piece such like a soft, almost dreamlike atmosphere, and it adds a lot of story to the piece as a whole. I think the prompt kind of pushes you to think of the range of blue tones, but Nadia, I think, in her piece has showed a lot of courage because she's taken the strong light blues and like the stronger dark blues and really just worked with very strong levels to create a much more powerful image. I think it's a really clever way of playing with this prompt. Isaiah redesigned an original Mandalorian armour using the blue prompt as a new point of inspiration. And I really like that idea, this kind of revisiting and reimagining past Prompt Squad art and seeing what you've learned from it and how even small changes to it can transform what came before. I say I would love to know what you thought of this redesign too because when I see it, it kind of makes me imagine like a water or an ocean planet and then you're just thinking like what weapons would be, you know, useful there, like what would be different and I don't know, I just, it, it's exciting to me, it like generates all these fun ideas and different stories that could come from it. And yeah, I love it, I love that about this piece. Saya's mum also joined in this month with this fantastic portrait. I mean, after seeing your sister's art too, Isaiah, I mean, I think it has to be said, you are from a very talented family. The line art in this piece, especially to create that hair texture through those, like, you know, the white tone lines, oh, it's just, it's gorgeous. I think that the styling and the way that she's illustrated the curls of the hair is probably my favourite aspect though. I find hair textures very difficult to do, especially curls like this, and the way that she's given them some shape and tone with such a restricted colour palette is really inspiring. It really makes me want to attempt curled hair again because it's a very cool way of doing it. Troy has clearly caught the Hollow Knight bug get it guys <laughs> but yeah he's clearly a fan of the game because this piece is just it's just beautiful i mean i really love how troy has played with the levels in his piece too especially that bright almost white blue in the background in the center of this whole thing and then it frames this overall scene and you know kind of creates like a 
like an invisible frame around the character. It's really hard to explain, but it's a very clever composition, I think, and having all these strong borders and yeah, it's just very well designed. I think Troy's always got a great eye for creating strong compositions like this. Dave did this absolutely insane moody portrait of Ted from Bill and Ted. I mean, you know, he's also known as Keanu Reeves, I guess. But yeah, I really love the use of shadows and sharp angles against that softer curved white. It adds a really nice texture without using a textured brush. And to be honest, that kind of inspires me a lot to kind of lay off my pastel brushes a bit. Seeing what Dave's been able to achieve here just using, you know, flat layers of colours and different tones. I would absolutely love to see Dave go even further with this style. You know, you'll have to let us know if you want to do that, Dave, because I think you've done it masterfully in this piece. I think it's really cool. Tara has created this absolutely stunning painting for the prompt, and I can't even really think clearly when I'm looking at it. It's just beautiful. The transformation of the legs of the mermaid into the tail is illustrated so well. It mimics the kind of ocean waves that she's designed that frame around her, but it also gives this feeling of movement too. I also love that stripe effect that Tara has done. You know, the shapes within the waves look amazing. It's just such a cool stylistic design and I never would have thought of doing it. And finally, that goldfish above her is so cute and adorable. I love it. But I mean, you probably could have guessed I was going to say that. It's just amazing, Tara. M created this sweet doodle art of her own minion character. I think probably my favourite part of this one, other than the watercolour paint textures throughout the background and within the character, has to be that mixture of blue hues that she's used and achieved in this. I think it feels on the surface that making a colour scheme with just one colour should be really easy, but I'm pretty sure everyone who's taken part in this has realised that is not necessarily the truth. And M's piece has a great example of using the warmer tones within a blue and the colder tones and just mixing them all really well to create a beautiful colour palette, even though it is kind of all framed within one you know, part of the colour wheel. I think it's really impressive. Zoe created this beautiful night scene using watercolours. I love the gradient of blues going down the page and then ending in the kind of sharp silhouettes of the pine trees and those forms. It's just a really lovely natural scene that also has something a bit, I don't know, like magical a little bit. I don't know how to explain it. I think it's probably the stars and the constellation designs because it just gives that just, I don't know, like animal crossing magical, like just childlike feel. I don't know, it, it, there's something about it that I really like in the design. And yeah, there's the little details like that and the way that she's highlighted the edges of the pine trees. I don't know, it makes me kind of think as well of Inktober, I guess. It sort of makes me a bit more inspired for that, you know, crazy looming challenge that's coming. Far photos used white board markers at school to draw this beautiful rose illustration. I mean, this one really kind of stood out to me, Far photos, because I think like just seeing all the different pen strokes and the different directions that you've done as you were drawing it, I don't know, the way that it all spreads out, I guess, from the centre of the rose, it gives this effect like it's growing. It's just such a cool effect. I don't think I've ever seen something like it. I think it's really impressive. And it just gives it some life, gives it a lot of texture. And there's something fitting, I think, about using whiteboard markers and knowing that this is going to be a short-lived piece of art. And in that, you know, you're depicting something natural and short-lived too, like a rose in bloom. I don't know, there's something, you know, you know, clever and smart in there that Far Photos has done and I'm explaining very poorly. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining the Prom Squad again. It's funny because when we first came up with that name, I remember just like making it was like a, you know, it's a jokey title for everyone. I thought we'd all have a laugh with it. But then after you say it like so many times like this, it starts being like a real name now. Like it's not just a joke, it's an actual thing. <laughs> But yeah, it's just weird. Anyway, on to the next prompt. It is time to start spinning the wheel. Just in case you're new, this wheel is full of all the prompts thought up by the members of the Prompt Squad community. So if you're watching, you have an idea for the wheel and a future prompt that all of the artists and yourself, if you want to join, can take on, make sure to comment it down below and I'll make sure to add it to next month's spin. And the winner is... 
Oh, okay. False idol suggested by Zoe. Okay. I'm intrigued by this one because I honestly have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I love that. I mean, it's, it's a really exciting one to look at. This is probably pretty fitting as well because, you know, considering next month is going to be Inktober and going up to Halloween, I feel like you could go a bit darker with this prompt. Maybe bring us into that spooky season a bit. Or maybe, you know, depending on the way Inktober goes, we're all going to have to start praying to some false idols. <laughs> might, might become quite true, this one. Who knows? But yeah, this should be a fun one to try out. I think I'm definitely going to take this as a chance to do some more research, get some new ideas going, maybe try something that I haven't drawn before. You know, I can't wait to see the direction the rest of the prompt squad decides to go with it too, because I feel like this is one that people could really get their teeth into. So thank you, Zoe, for suggesting it. So... That is the prompt. Create a piece of art inspired by false idols. You can use any medium, any style. Watch the beginning part again if you want ideas. Just make sure to add the hashtag prompt squad when you upload it. That just helps me find it and make sure I can get it featured in next month's video for you. Next month being Inktober, I think we'll keep up with our tradition of the last few years of choosing our favourite piece of art that we've created through that monthly challenge because everyone always has like so much on, I just don't want to overwhelm anyone. So yeah, we thought we'd do that. So this is going to be kind of the last prompt for a couple of months now that's kind of unique to the prompt squad. So I really hope you get a chance to give it a go. And with that, another month of the challenge is complete. Thank you all so much for both creating such inspiring art that all of us can enjoy and for watching and supporting all the artists who take part every month. I know we always have, you know, regulars and people who can only make certain ones. And it's always just so nice to keep following, you know, old and new artists over the whole year. You know, it's amazing to see. Take care of yourselves and I'll chat to you all soon. Bye.